This video features gratuitous use of Home Assistant Wink Words. We kindly ask that you mute your assistance. You've been warned. Thank you. The Home Assistant hardware we've all been waiting for is finally here. But does it mean that we can throw away our Amazon and our Google devices? Uh, probably not. Am I going to buy one for every room in my house? <laughs> Absolutely. Hey Jarvis, drop my needle. The Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition is the most mainstream smart home device the community has ever delivered. And that might be a problem, because some of that community are here because Home Assistant gives them the power to connect literally anything to their smart home, which is not associated with the mainstream platforms. But there's also a growing part of the community that wants that mainstream smart home platform fit and finish without the privacy concerns. And that mainstream fit and finish is not something Home Assistant is known for. Which tribe you belong to is going to dictate a lot about how this device is going to fit into your smart home life. So in this video, we're going to take a closer look at how well this device is going to fit in with those two smart home lifestyles. And we're gonna start with the question, is it mainstream enough? The Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition may sound like a development device, but it works amazingly well out of the box. And it starts with how easy it is to get it up and running. No having to flash anything. No solder, no YAML. You plug it in, Home Assistant detects it, and a nice UI flow guides you through the quick onboarding. And that brings up a good point. You need Home Assistant to use this device. You don't need Home Assistant Cloud or some high-powered hardware running your instance. You don't even need a net local LLM. All of the commands you're going to hear in this video were added to my local instance. And while I'm using Home Assistant Cloud to handle my speech processing and my text-to-speech, you can do everything completely local. So if you're currently using a Raspberry Pi 4, this is going to work on your system. But connecting it to your smart home is only part of the problem. Import all home... Ugh, never mind. Funny, at first I thought you were using real words. Silly me. To be really useful, your smart home needs to be able to understand what you're asking of it. And when it comes to the assistant inside of Home Assistant, it's not quite as smart as your Echo or your Google. This lack of functionality, in my opinion, is why the team labeled it a preview edition. But make no mistake, this device is a gateway device, both because as soon as you use it, you're going to want to add more of them, and because the year of the voice is about to extend into its third year. We've come a long way, and I expect it's going to get exponentially better faster than any of us expect. But as for what it can do today, it's going to handle your smart home functions. Hey Jarvis, turn off the lights. Turned off the lights. But you're not going to be able to ask it something like, Hey Jarvis, locate Santa Claus. Now you are just saying words. Are you sure they are in the right order? Yeah, sorry. The I didn't understand that got annoying. So I gave Jarvis some options that I thought better fit his personality. Because it's incredibly easy to extend the functionality with your own commands. Hey Jarvis, import all preferences from home interface. Will do, sir. Although that isn't something you can do from the UI. So while we're all excited to get our very own Google and Amazon device up and running, this device hasn't reached feature parity with its mainstream peers. If, on the other hand, you're looking to build your very own personal assistant using Home Assistant, or you just want basic voice capability while keeping it completely local, then it doesn't get any easier than the Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition. And because this makes it super easy to add local voice, that begs the question, is it too mainstream? Anything the Home Assistant team does these days risks riling up the fanboys. But if we ignore the hashtags for a moment, the reality is our community has a deep love for tinkering. And while this device might look at first to be mainstream, it does ensure that all of us that like to tinker can get our fix. The Home Assistant Preview Edition comes with ESP Home pre-installed on an ESP32 S3. It has USB-C for power. And in a special nod to those of us that collect smart home devices, the power adapter and the USB cable 
are not included, so grab one from that box of spare cables you have. You can also connect an external speaker to it using the RCA audio out. The built-in speaker is fine for text-to-speech and notification sounds, but if you're an audiophile, you are going to want that external speaker. It has a hardware mute switch on the side, and it gives some nice color feedback when it's on, complete with sound effects. On the bottom is a Grove port. The Grove port can be used to extend the functionality like connecting temp sensors. It's relatively new, but from what I can see, it looks like we're going to have some compelling options pretty soon. On the top, it has a wheel for controlling the volume that will remind you of the old iPods. It has some nice tactile feedback. And the button in the center can be used to cancel the commands or to get its attention without using the wake word. It's actually a multi-purpose button, and because the entity is inside of Home Assistant, you can automate off of things like long press and double click. The LED ring provides some nice color feedback showing the volume level. Hey Jarvis, start a timer for 10 seconds. Timer set for 10 seconds. And it will even give you visual feedback of how long is left on your timer. All in all, this is a device that will let you push the limits of what you can do with a local smart speaker. Which leads us to another question. What are the actual limits here? The question of limits is really going to come down to what you currently use your voice assistant for and how much you like to tinker. Like I said, the commands you can ask this are all related to your smart home out of the box. Hey Jarvis, turn on the lights. Turned on the lights. But adding your own commands is pretty easy, and it doesn't require an LLM. Hey Jarvis, are you awake? For you, always. How may I be of service? I'm working on some videos to show you how to easily add your own commands and give your smart home some personality. So if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, now's a good time. Because it is pretty easy, and I think we can build a pretty powerful voice assistant without ever involving an LLM. In terms of understanding when you're across the room with music playing, I did this little test here. Hey Jarvis, we're in a new project file. Shall I store this on the Slacker Lab central database? It does a really good job thanks to the XMOS audio processing built in, and for reference there, I was 12 feet away and the Apple HomePod was about 3.5 feet away. So I don't think you're going to have a problem using this device in a busy room. It does come with a media player entity, so you can play your own music on this device, either local or via your favorite streaming service. But it isn't going to sound as good as the Amazon Echo or a Google Home. But if you have a little speaker like this Philips one, it might be a nice upgrade. Hey Jarvis, drop my needle. Yeah, that sounds better. Okay, let's get real. Is the Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition the voice hardware you need? And the answer is, <laughs> it depends. This is a fantastic piece of hardware. The Exmos chip, the packaging, the price, it's going to be hard for the average user to beat this for Home Assistant voice hardware. But honestly, there isn't any functionality in this device that you can't get out of another voice satellite. We've already had the ability to build prior to this. This M5 stack Atom Echo might not be as good with noisy environments, and there is no RCA jack and no media player. But that isn't a problem when we're talking Home Assistant. And to be clear, I'm not saying you shouldn't buy a Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition for every room. I already have some more on the way myself. But if you already have some Atom Echoes laying around, and some Google Homes, the reality is this Atom Echo combined with this Google Home is pretty good too. Here, let me show you. I'm just going to go back here. Okay, Naboo. Tell them. You should hit that subscribe button. Because automating the boring stuff is easy with Home Assistant and Slacker Labs. <laughs> yeah, what he said. Because the video on how to set up your ESP voice to route the output to the nearest media player will be dropping soon. Also, be sure to check out the other reviews on this 
Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition. Thank you.